Hello everyone, welcome to the online lecture of engineering mechanics. So in the view of coronavirus, it will be difficult to cover all the topics of engineering mechanics with the available classes. So there is only one way, is to make use of the online class facilities. So I am continuing what we have stopped in the last class or just uh, many of them are absent for the last class. So so I'm explaining uh, the idea of moment of inertia once again. That's why I just asked to read a topic in the morning from a uh, mechanics textbook. I hope all of you have read that topic and uh, have uh, got an idea about what is moment of inertia. It's a area property of a material. Suppose a force is acting on a material. Uh, the how the force got affected due to that force moment will be created and the moment will be concentrated at some point and all the moment concentrated will depend on uh, the cross section of the material so in general uh, we can define as a area of property area moment of inertia second moment of area is descent uh, equal to the distance square into area will give us the second moment of area or moment of inertia of the given body. Here is we have some area and uh, we are considering a small section DA and we have I have marked axis y axis x axis and uh, z axis are also there it's perpendicular to this plane. Uh, and uh, y is distance from the x axis and is distance from the y axis. So, moment of inertia can be defined as the distance square into area. So, this is the uh, area of cross section or small section is dA, distance square. A moment of inertia with respect to x axis is given as Ixx. So, distance square into dA. So, from the x axis, the distance is y and the area is dA. So, y square dA will give us the moment of inertia of this small section. Suppose we want to calculate the moment of inertia of the whole section, we have to integrate this uh, dA. So, integral y square dA will give us the moment of inertia of the given area of cross section with respect to x axis. Similarly, moment of inertia with respect to y axis equal to x square distance equal to x, x square dA will give us the moment of inertia with respect to y axis. The next topic you have to go through the unit of moment of inertia. It's a simple thing. It's a, what is the area of, uh, sorry, unit of area? It's a millimeter square or meter square. And uh, distance, area of distance, millimeter or meter. So distance square, millimeter square into area, millimeter square. So millimeter square into millimeter square, millimeter raised to 4 will be the area of moment of inertia or meter raised to 4 will give us the area of the moment of inertia. So we have to study three basic cross section for the for solving the problems in moment of inertia and we have to derive so we have to derive the equation for that. So in connection with that first we will calculate the moment of inertia of a rectangular cross section. So here I have a rectangular cross section A B C D I have x-axis, y-axis passing through the centroid of this section. If an axis passing through the centroid, it is called as the centroidal axis. You, know, you will have a question in the unit examination. What do you mean by centroidal axis? If uh, an axis passing through the centroid of the body, that is called the centroidal axis. So in this rectangle, we have marked the axis at the center. For derivation, we will be considering a small section marked in the green color at a distance y from the x-axis. So, in derivation I will be deriving the equation for Ixx moment of inertia with respect to x-axis. So, equation is Ixx is equal to distance square into dA. So, distance from the x-axis is equal to y and area, area of this section. The width of the section is marked as dy and so breadth is marked as B. So, total area of this small section is equal to dy into B is the total area of section. Distance is y. So, the moment of inertia is equal to area into y square. So, B dy into y square will give us the moment of inertia of this small section with respect to x axis. B d square 
so is by square dy. For getting the moment of inertia of this whole rectangle, we have to integrate. The axis is at the center. Towards up, we have some distance. Towards down, we have some distance. The total distance is d. So towards top, we have d by 2. Towards bottom, we have d by 2. So we are integrating the equation p d square. So b y square d y from minus d by 2 to plus d by 2. B d square d y integrating minus d by 2. So, b is a constant, we are taking it outside, y square by y square in the integral, it will be y cube by 3. And applying the limit, y equal to d by 2, d by 2 all cube, minus d by 2 all cube. So, minus all is to cube, there will be a minus, and minus, and minus, it will be plus. In final, we will get the answer, b d cube by 12. Or, breadth into depth cube divided by 12. The side which is parallel to the axis is taken as breadth and the side which is parallel to the axis is taken as depth. So breadth into depth cube divided by 12. Similarly, you can try the derivation for i, y, y. You will get the equation as depth into breadth cube divided by 12. E, b cube by 12. So that is the equation for moment of inertia of a rectangular cross section with respect to centroidal axis. We are keeping the axis at the centroid. So we are keeping, we can, we have an option to keeping the axis at uh, point D, point C, point B, point A. Then the equation for moment of inertia will vary. That we will discuss later. Next is the moment of inertia of a whole or rectangular section. Uh, initially we got the moment of inertia of a rectangular section, Vd cube by 12. So we will see this whole of rectangular section as a two rectangle, one large rectangle A B C D and a small rectangle E F H. So for the large rectangle A B C D we can write what is the moment of inertia B D Q by twelve. For the small rectangle E F G H we can write having a breadth B one so B one and having a depth D one B one D one cube divided by twelve. For obtaining a uniform the remaining I make a hole, rectangular hole in the rectangular sheet. So, I have to subtract the moment of inertia of the second one from the first one. So, B d cube by 2 minus B1 D1 cube divided by 2 gives the moment of inertia of this rectangular cross section with respect to x axis. This is a key how we are calculating moment of inertia of complex section. Suppose uh, in General, we have to add uh, some section or subtract some section like that. Uh, a circle in front, a circular with a rectangular hole. So we have to calculate the moment of inertia of a circle and subtract the moment of inertia of a rectangle like that. So just understand, if there is uh, as per the requirement, we have to add or subtract the moment of inertia of the cross section. After that, we have to study a new theorem, theorem of perpendicular axis. So, already I have discussed the moment of inertia with respect to x-axis and moment of inertia with respect to y-axis. In this figure, you can see a circular area and it got a distance x from the y-axis, it got a distance y from the x-axis. So, we can write moment of inertia with respect to x-axis dA into y square, moment of inertia with respect to y-axis as dA into x square. Similarly, it is got a distance of r from the third axis. So, we can write the moment of inertia as dA into r square. So, as per theorem, moment of inertia with respect to third axis equal to the moment of inertia with respect to x axis plus y axis. So, we have to prove that it's an xy plane. You can see a, a rectangle having side x and breadth y. Uh, let r be the diagonal of this rectangle, we can write r square equal to x square plus y square. So, it's a simple geometric relation. So, i z z equal to d a into r square is already defined that. So, r square can be written as x square plus y square. So, d a into x square plus y square. We can split this d a into x square plus d a into y square. d a into x square can be written as i y y. d a into y square can be written as i x x. So, i y y plus i x x. So, the theorem is 
proved. This is the perpendicular axis theorem. Okay. So that's it. Uh, it's a introduction topic about moment of inertia. The remaining topic will be covered in the upcoming classes. Hope you will all following this topics. You have to write the notes in your notebook. Also, I will provide problems for your homework. We will be discussing more problems in the upcoming classes. Thank you. You can also share your comments. And if you want any change in the mode of lecture, that can be uh, intimated through personal messages or emails like that. Okay. Thank you.